I genuinely used to think like, I could play in the men's team. Am I gonna go and play for Chelsea one day? Am I gonna walk out with the men at Wembley in an FA Cup final? Battersea is where it all started. It's where I grew up, this is home. Growing up on the estate and so my nan's estate was one side of the road and my mum and brothers and sisters were the other and kind of split between the two. Um, my primary school was smack bang in the middle of my nan's estate. And yeah, pretty much grew up playing football, whether it be in, in school all day, every day. I always had somebody that I could play with. And then it go from me and my brother to anything up to, no word of a lie, probably 50 of us in what felt like a big cage at the time. But when, when I've been back, is the, the smallest cage I've ever been in. So yeah, and we used to just play football until the, the street lights come on and it was home time. I'd say me and my little brother was always together when Big Brother would fight and tussle and be really competitive with each other. I love my Big Brother, I used to think he was the best player. But I'm better than you when we play in the cage. It used to really frustrate the life out of me. But when it come to the computer, they were so much better than me. My uncle often took us to Chelsea, which was literally just across the bridge. He was what we would all call, you know, our dad at the time. And he was somebody that we, we looked up to and he took us under his wing. and. If it wasn't for him and the environment he created, he was football crazy and a massive Chelsea fan. You know, as you do as kids, you try and learn the words to every song. And one day he said to us, you can't just keep learning the songs. If you want to love the game, you have to understand the game. And, and that's what I started to do from a very young age. And I think that's why at the time when I played women's football, it was a little bit easier for me because I actually studied the game more as a geeky analyst than, than as, actually as a football fan. And that was because of him. FIFA does teach the game. And as I say, it's similar to playing on the streets. You know, when do I pass? When do I try and dribble? So it gives you that freedom to just play and make the game exciting. I genuinely used to think like, I could play in the men's team. Like, am I gonna go and play for Chelsea one day? Am I gonna walk out with the men and, and, and play? And my, my mate laughs about it because we, we speak about it. And she was like, I'm gonna be the first girl on TV to play, you know, in the men's team. Because it was so normal to play with the boys as a kid that maybe I thought as an adult, it'd still be normal. I only ever dreamt about playing for Chelsea at Wembley in an FA Cup final. So to walk the stairs and, and lift the FA Cup with Arsenal, it's the ultimate. And it wasn't so much when I was playing, it was the stairs because we had this cage and they had steps going down on both sides. And so we always used to play a match and, and it will be the FA Cup final. So I think it was just that moment of walking, you know, the famous steps that everybody walks to lift that cup was the moment that took me back to, to when I was a kid. But it clearly wasn't for the women's team because I never knew anything about the women's teams. As I mentioned, we used to go to Chelsea games. There was an advertisement maybe as big as this, asking for players to trial for their under 14 team. And, I, and my uncle uh, at the time was like, you've got to go for these trials. And we lived in Battersea and the trials were like somewhere in Morden, which I'd never been to Morden before. And so I got on the wrong bus. <laughs> and I was like an hour and a half walking distance back to where the trial was. It was a three hour trial. I got there 25 minutes before the end of the trial. Played the games and they offered me to come and sign for the under 14. So I probably didn't need the, the two and a half hours before that. I don't know how my mum had money to, to afford for me to play back then. We'd pay a fiver on a, on a Friday night for training and a fiver for a match day on a Sunday. It was difficult because even when it come to like boots and, and stuff like that, I had one pair of boots, 20 pound pair, that I would spray paint at the end of every season just so it looked like I had a new pair because we couldn't afford them. But I always knew I wanted to play football, but it never seemed possible. And I, I even remember because Chelsea were in a league below the Premier League. And I was always told if you stay at Chelsea, you're never going to be able to play for England. You know, sometimes you've got to leave friends and people that you're close to behind in order to go and pursue what you want to achieve in whatever it might be. And mine was, mine was in football. So I think that was the hardest part of leaving a, a, the, the family of Chelsea behind. And then down we went to Charlton and, and ended up signing. Uh, crazily, but they were playing in the Premier League, so I knew that it would still give me a chance of getting into England. And as soon as I signed, I pretty much got the, the senior call up. It was a, a, I would say, a great international career that I had. I think the reason I got as many caps as I did, probably because I would never turn down ever playing for England. It's genuinely difficult to say what it felt like, but to be to play under four managers and to represent England 172 times. Super proud. I played with some unbelievably talented players, but in a, an era where the game wasn't professional. And so opportunity to get the very best physically out of us probably wasn't there. We always wasn't able to continue to compete at 
you know, past 60 minutes against the top teams, for example, or you play in a tournament and once you get to game three, you know, you're flagging. And you, we felt like we had the ability to win something, but obviously not the support. When I signed for Liverpool, I heard that Liverpool were going to go sort of semi-professional three or four times a week training. I mean, it was nice because it felt like I was signing a, a professional contract, but in terms of what was on the contract, it was just more a case of then being given an opportunity to forget about working, so be less tired when I then go to training. And when I'm training, I can give my all to the game. And in, in doing that, we won back-to-back -back titles and I got named in PFA Team of the Year two years on the bounce. So it certainly, for the first time, allowed me to give everything to football and then be recognised for, you know, the player that I was. I think I've obviously played half, over 23 years I've played in the game, you know, from 14 and I retired at 37. So a long time in trying to grow the game and it's crazy because people always ask me about, you know, what would you be if you weren't a footballer? I don't know. It was all I ever wanted to do. And whatever team I represented, I tried to represent them and my country when I played as best as I felt I could and showed what it meant to me. And I'd always try and play as much as possible with a smile. Even though when I do these things, people, you know, you take a, a photo in the kit, they want it to be really serious. And I'm like, I'm not serious because football brought me something that nothing else could and, and that was a smile. So yeah, I think certainly moved it and helped to move it in a better place. And honestly, when the girls won the Euros, I probably was happier than them. I probably celebrated longer than them as well. <laughs> so yeah, we left it in a, in a good place. And I know I played a small part in trying to shift the game from where it was to where it is now. But just seeing where it is in terms of, you know, young girls, the dream that I never had of, you know, being a full-time female professional. These young girls now can dream of that. You know, the visibility now through, through broadcasters, the brands that are on board, you know, that's exciting. And the women's game, FIFA 23 is big. <laughs> Female footballers. You know, the, the good thing is, is that I think, you know, from the Euros, like even my nephews now, they're, they're singing that Alyssa Russo and Tooney song. And they would have never have done that. And now the visibility through, through FIFA 23, having female footballers on, on the game, I think is equally as important. I'm excited to see all the new features, but I'm, I'm excited to see the women's team on it. You know, actually see some of the players on it and, and be them for real.